So maybe I guess if I could say what the call to action is, as you're looking through your religious, potential religious viruses that could be hiding in your system somewhere, like anytime you think you already know what something means, approach it in a new light and say, well, Lord, show me something new about that passion uh, passage in the Bible that I read. You know, one of them is, cast not your pearls before swine. You know, I got a whole new revelation just by reading somebody's book about the Sermon on the Mount. And I totally looked at it differently. Even though I had heard people talk about it one way, I came to understand it to mean something totally different. In fact, opposite of what I originally thought it meant. So that's a beautiful thing about God. The relationship is so dynamic and alive and real, but we have to put our effort in. And, and here's towards the purpose of why, and that's why I'm ending with 2 Corinthians 5. Verse 18 says, God has given us this task. Say task. Make sure you're awake. That's a four-letter word, isn't it? Sounds like work to me. What's the task? Oh, Siri. It's a four-letter word. She's listening. We got to get her saved. <laughs> she could be giving people prophetic words. <laughs> she thought I said, what's a four-letter word? That's amazing. What else are they listening to? Oh, I'm going to put her over here. <laughs> Invade my privacy. So what was Eddie James's task if you were here? He wants to meet hurting young people and see their lives transformed by the power of God. And music being one of those universal languages, people are drawn to good music no matter what. That's been true for thousands of years. So the, he's an amazingly good songwriter. But he's also a powerful minister, right? You too, Carolyn. See, we're, we're both guilty. <laughs> Victims of technology. So God gave Eddie a task, and he's working out his salvation with fear and trembling, and God has shown him what to do. And as he's along the way, he meets people, and the Lord speaks to him, and they join up with his ministry. And, you know, it was beautiful to watch. I think I told you, right, I was here with them all day yesterday, and the singers were up on the altar here for three hours rehearsing. And they're young kids. Like, none, nobody complained. It's not like they're perfect people, but they were joking around with each other and laughing and, and encouraging one another if somebody was having a hard time finding the part. And, um, you know, it was really cool to watch because you hear the stories. One of them had overdosed 14 times on heroin. I mean, not many people would get that many chances, right? And here he is now. His eyes are bright again. He came alive. He had lost a brother, I found out yesterday to an overdose, right? And there's only two kids in the family, and, you know, the parents thought, not going to be long, and then Jesus intercepted him on the road to hell and pulled him in. So Eddie knows what his task is. How about us? We need to know what our task is. So as we're praying in that morning and saying, Lord, give me tomorrow's bread, what's my task? Well, part of what Paul is saying here is he gave us this task of reconciling people to God, to him. How do you do that? Well, it's different for all of us because we're all in a different sphere. But you have one set of people you can talk to. And if you keep it in mind that reconciling people to God is just helping change their attitude about God. Most people around here, when you talk to them, if they're reluctant, it's because they had a bad experience in church growing up. A lot of people from one specific denomination <laughs> that I won't get into, but oh, no. You know, when my mother died, they wanted us to pay for the funeral. Or, You know, you just feel so bad that they threw Jesus out with the bathwater of a bad experience from a person. But you have the task of reconciling people back to God. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting our sins against us. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. I think we could stand for this because you're ambassadors. I, I am now uh, deputizing all of you according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. Can you say it with me? We are Christ's ambassadors. Not everybody said it. Maybe not everybody's willing to do this. Those who are, everybody who's willing, say I. I. If the person next to you didn't say it, give them one more chance. Everybody say I. That's manipulation. <laughs> he doesn't have to force you to do this if you don't want to, but I like to see myself as an ambassador. 
That's what this says. We are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal. Stop for a minute. He's speaking through you to people who don't know him, and he's giving you a task of reconciling that person you're speaking to back to God. Do you always feel qualified, ambassadors? So who makes you qualified? Jesus. So whether you feel qualified or not, Lord, I'm going to open my mouth. Please fill it. That's, that's what we have to do. He didn't count our sins against us, and then he gave us this job as ambassadors. And God is now making his appeal through us. Let's say it together. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we might be made right with God through Christ. All right, so raise your hand, ambassadors. Lord, I thank you for each one of us here who's been given a task that you would speak through us. What an amazing privilege that you would speak through us to the world. And look, this could be Christians and non-Christians because not everybody who says they're a Christian has this full dynamic relationship with God, but also to the unsaved people who just probably never met an authentic Christian, a son and daughter of a living God. And let them see something in us. Lord, we just pray that you would let them see something in us that would be appealing to them, that would be winsome to them, that would be drawn to us, but really what they're drawn to is the you that's inside of us. Lord, even Friday night, we thank you for the four people that came forward at that altar call. We thank you for so many of us that were so inspired by everything that Eddie did and to see somebody who clearly knows the task he's been given and who's operating in his gift at such a high level. I bless every one of your people here today to operate at that high level, to, to just detoxify our system from that toxic religion that would try to creep in and slow down our walk with you because we are going to live in a dynamic, fruit-bearing relationship with the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.